Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Samuel Sears was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him. By his death. Just as Christ is raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in baths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, 
We give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Sam and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we may also be found faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this afternoon is Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep you your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the gospel of the Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Born on uh, December 15th, 1937 in New York City, Samuel Oliver Sears Jr. was the son of Samuel O. Sears Sr. and Gladys Sears. He was baptized and confirmed in the Christian faith at the Resurrection Catholic Church of Harlem, New York. Sam grew up in New York City until the age of 14 and relocated to Norfolk, Virginia, where he lived with relatives. He graduated from Norfolk's Booker T. Washington High School in June of 1955 at the age of 17. In September 1955, he enlisted into the U.S. Air Force. On June 15, 1957, Sam, as he preferred to be called, married Irene Crocker in Norfolk. The couple were blessed with four children, uh, Daryl, Avanda, Terrence, and Beverly. Sam served 20 years in the United States Air Force as a public information specialist, journalist, and magazine newspaper editor, historian, and photographer. He wore a lot of hats, didn't he? Armed Forces Radio and Television Service Station Manager and Project Blue Book, uh, U.S. Air Force UFO Project Manager. His career took him to 23 countries in every state in the U.S. except for the New England states. He served in Vietnam in combat news and was awarded the Bronze Star for meritorious service. He retired in November of 1975 as a senior master sergeant from Strategic Air Command in Omaha. He returned to Rapid City, South Dakota, where he was stationed twice and went to work at KOTA-TV as their photo lab manager, processing film for the news and advertising departments. He also operated cameras for noon and nightly news broadcasts, was a news and advertising photographer, and produced on-site news and community TV specials. When the station transitioned to videotape, boy, that takes you back a few years, doesn't it? Wow. Um, he was the sole operator of its new video equipment and trained news personnel after attending a Kodak film school in Denver. He attended the University of Nebraska in Omaha while in the service and the National College of Business after retirement, graduating with a bachelor's degree in business administration. In May of 1980, Sam moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado to become an Army civilian employee and assistant editor of the Fort Carson Mountaineer newspaper. He later became the editor, taking the paper to the best in its class in the Army in 1986 and runner-up in the Department of Defense worldwide. He resigned from his Army position in 1992 and worked in the Colorado Springs Public Affairs Office and Media Relations Supervisor and Public Relations Liaison for the Fire, Gas, and Electric Departments. On July 4th, 1981, Sam married Ann Lichtenberg Diekman in Colorado Springs, and with this union, Sam expanded his family by one daughter, Brandy. He also has nine grandchildren, five great-grandchildren. Sam and Ann moved to Arthur in uh, 1995, and he re retired in 1998. How many times did he retire? <laughs> but he retired from Green Thumb Incorporated, a Des Moines-based corporation that assisted dedicated workers and seniors to prepare for employment. Sam and Ann celebrated 40 years of marriage on July 4th of this year. They both loved to travel, especially to Yuma, Arizona for the winter. He enjoyed playing cards and games with family and friends, playing golf, and was an avid Denver Broncos fan, but we won't hold that against him. <laughs> Just teasing. He was an active member of the McNamara Moore Post 61 of Ida Grove American Legion. Sam was a life member of the American Legion, Disabled American Veterans, Veterans of Foreign Wars, and the Retired Enlisted Association. He was a faithful member uh, here at St. Paul and as an associate member of Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church of Yuma. And uh, he was confirmed in the LCMS Lutheran Faith in 1985 in Hawaii. And by the way, I got a note from the pastor in Yuma, and hopefully he is watching as we are streaming. So we say welcome to all the good folks in Arizona, and we're happy that you can join us. At age 83 on Sunday, this past Sunday, God took Adam home to rest in the arms of Jesus to wait the resurrection after a long but courageous battle with cystic kidney disease. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that I chose is our Old Testament reading, Psalm 121. 
And the reason I chose that is I was thinking about this psalm when I reflect on the times when I visited and prayed with Sam these last few months. He would listen intently as best he could, depending upon his condition at the time, as I read the scriptures, had a devotion, and we prayed together and was even fortunate to give him Holy Communion. As you hear the last verse of this psalm, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Many people recognize it as a verse used during the baptismal service. This psalm then was one of the first psalms psalm that Sam heard in the church as it was spoken at him in his baptism. It was a blessing spoken over him as it's spoken over most of us who are baptized, giving him the promise that the Lord will keep him from then on. In holy baptism in May of 1938, Sam received the Holy Spirit who created faith in his Lord in his heart and gave him this special promise for 83 years prior to his Lord's final blessing of calling him to his eternal home and glory. The Lord never fails to keep his promises. From the day of his baptism, Sam grew in the faith given to him and he clung to his Lord's promise to keep him to his very last breath and now for all eternity. Today we celebrate that the Lord has kept his promise. Sam has been kept by his Lord. The Lord provided Sam with all the help he could ever need, no matter what the circumstances. He was instructed in God's word, which showed him that he was born in sin and also showed him all the sins he committed throughout his life. The Lord here also was helping him see his need for deliverance from sin and the evil. He knew his Lord was calling him to repentance in order to save him from his striking punishment. He knew the words of St. Paul to the church in Rome and to us, the wages of sin is death. Sam knew that is what he really deserved. So regularly as I was privileged to serve as his pastor, I would hear him confess his sins. Whenever I brought the Lord's Supper to him at home, he confessed from memory the general confession. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. He didn't read that. He said it with me. Sam knew what he deserved, but he also knew the rest of the passage from Romans. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sam knew his Lord had come into this world to suffer and to die on the cross for his sins. He knew when he rose again on the third day, it was to give him everlasting life. So he confidently believed the words the Lord spoke to him through the mouth of his pastor, the words of absolution. When either of us pastors would say to him, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He made his confession of faith on his confirmation day in May 1986. Sam was able to confess his sins, able to confess his faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and was able to pray the Lord's Prayer all from memory. What a joy and comfort to know his Lord's ever-present help. St. Paul reminds us that nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord was always there with him during the joys of his life as the Lord brought him a loving wife and companion and Ann. The Lord kept him in his going with Ann as they traveled the country. A lot of miles on those vehicles. The Lord kept him along the way as he blessed them both with children. Yes, children, you are a blessing. Whether you believe it or not, yes, you are. Gifts from the Lord himself. The Lord was Sam's keeper in tough times too, as he comforted him, comforted him with his presence, especially during his many medical procedures these last years. 
The Lord was present with him every day and night as he lived out his days at home, keeping him from evil and eventually strengthening his faith and blessing him through his word and sacraments. With God's promise of forgiveness and adoption as his child and an heir of his kingdom given to him in his baptism, by the assurance of forgiveness through repentance and absolution and through the nourishing and strengthening of his God-given faith in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, Sam has known the security and the joy that the Lord is his keeper. The Lord promises his sheep that they shall never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand, says Jesus. Sam's response to his Lord's gracious keeping has been a long, long life of service to his Lord as a husband, as a father, as a Bible student, as a military man, as an ardent prayer for his family, his fellow members of the church, and his pastors. In his loving care and concern for his family and friends, Sam chose some of the scripture verses that are being read here today and the music that we've experienced. Sam knew that a happy and a harmonious life can be, sh can be ours when we heed the words of the Lord. He knew and believed the words of our Lord when he said, You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Lord granted him long life on this earth, and now the completion of his promise to keep his life forevermore with him in glory has now been fulfilled. What a joy and a comfort we have today as we celebrate Sam's life and know that he has been kept by his Lord for 83 years on this earth and now is kept by his Lord for all eternity. For you see, Sam also truly believed in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, as we say in the Apostles' Creed. And what a joy and a comfort we also have for ourselves by knowing our helper, the Lord our keeper, who has washed us clean of all our sins in our baptism and in our confession and repentance as he has created faith in Jesus Christ in us and brought us into his everlasting kingdom. The Lord has promised us the same joy of knowing this. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Our dearest friend, our great Redeemer, our gracious Lord and Savior has kept Sam's life and continues to keep us and our life also. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now stand and join in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him in your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, give to the family of Sam and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care. Casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead, in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand 
to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, receive our thanks for Sam and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing. We stand. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Before the final benediction, just let you know that immediately after the service, you are cordially invited to join us for refreshments and fellowship in the fellowship hall downstairs. So as you exit, please go right downstairs and join us. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Please be seated.
now stand for our final hymn.